The build show today, one of my favorite topics, roofing. Whether you're re-roofing a house or building a brand new house, these two may be on your options list. Asphalt shingles and metal shingles. We're gonna get into all the comparisons today. We're gonna to talk about weight, cost, performance, longevity, warranty, all kinds of stuff. Today's build show is sponsored by Ideal Roofing. Let's get going. All right, guys, let me introduce you to Philip LaPlante. Philip is actually the fourth generation family owner. His great grandfather and great uncle started Ideal Roofing. And Philip, we're gonna be talking specifically today about your Wakefield Bridge uh, steel shingle versus these asphalt shingles. So Philip, let's start with weight. Give me some guidelines on weight of asphalt shingles versus your shingle. Yeah. Typically a square, where let's say a bundle of asphalt shingle runs anywhere from 100 pounds. So you'd be three bundles for a square, be roughly 300 pounds a, a square. Con compared to our Wakefield Bridge, Wakefield Bridge uh, box is roughly 45 pounds, so 90 pounds per square. So a lot lighter, you're talking about a third of the weight. Yeah, about a third of the weight. And just for reference, this is a 29 gauge Correct. Uh, steel but you also have that in some other gauges available as well, right? Yeah, we've ran the 26 gauge as well. Uh, 29 gauge is the most common one used out there, but it is available in 26 gauge as well. Okay, next up, let's talk fire. I know a lot of my builder friends, Colorado, uh, California, fire and fire ratings is a big deal. Talk to me about asphalt versus your steel shingles. Well, as we know, asphalt, uh, God forbid there'd be a fire on the next door neighbor, um, Ambers would fly from the burning house onto the second house mm -hmm. and it would catch fire onto the roof and then keep passing on. So yeah. in a lot of uh, areas, fire prone areas, they're actually uh, staying away from asphalt and almost banning asphalt and pushing for a metal roof. Yeah, and, um, and asphalt, you know, the name sounds tricky, but it's a petroleum based product that has some type of granule on it. But in fact, the petroleum would actually burn this base in here. And there's probably also some fiberglass or some uh, other types of products in there, but that petroleum could catch fire on us. Correct. Yeah. So going with the metal doesn't mean you're going to save your house if you have a fire from the inside, but it just means it's basically the class A means that if you'd have ambers flying from your neighbor's house or a house across landing onto the, onto your roof, it wouldn't spark an extra, another fire onto your house. And yeah, metal doesn't it, burn. Right? Metal doesn't burn. Yeah, that's right. And also with the class A, you might actually see some reduction in your homeowner's insurance as well with your roof compared to some other options out there. Correct. I like it. All right, next let's talk about recyclability. You know, one of the things that bugs me about standard shingles is when the shingle crew comes, rips off that roof, uh, you've got this huge dumpster. There's not a lot of options to recycle that. Nope. Most, as I understand, roofs that are asphalt, uh, they get torn off, get thrown in the landfill. Uh, some of them get ground down into road base, but that's a pretty small percentage. Talk to me about your metal roof. Well, with the Wakefield Bridge or any metal roof, right, it's 100% recycled. So at, after its lifetime, after it, its uh, end, when let's say you want to change it for cosmetic reasons more than anything, um, it's 100% recycled. You're going to send this to a, uh, to a metal recycling recycler and they're going to transform it into new steel. Yeah, and they actually, you might actually make some money on that recycle. Mm -hmm. So they might cut you a check for bringing in your metal roof. Correct. Rather than paying to dump it at the landfill. That's a big deal. All right, let's talk hail. That's a big, big problem for me here in the south and a lot of parts of the country. Talk to me about hail resistance of asphalt versus metal. Yeah, well, our Wakefield Bridge is class four hail resistant. So that's uh, your golf ball size hail. Mm -hmm. um, since it's a flat panel as well, you're going on to a solid decking. Gives it a lot more strength and noticing that it's flat, you won't see any major damages onto the shingle. Yeah, so, so in other words, a golf ball size hail, uh, you're not gonna damage the shingle itself structurally. You might get some dents if it gets bigger than that. You know, if you get a baseball size hail, you're definitely gonna dent this roof. Correct. But it may not fail in terms of its actual water hold out though, right? Exactly. It's, at that point, it's really a cosmetic failure, not necessarily a water intrusion. Whereas one of these roofs, I did an ice cannon video a couple of years ago where we shot some ice cubes uh, and boy, you can definitely damage one of these roofs with hail. Yeah. And including water leaks because of that damage. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. Okay, let's talk wind uplift. You know, when the roofers nail these down, they're using those big uh, heads on those roofing nails. Seems like 
uh, it's gonna hold down, except that sometimes when I see these, they actually rip through the shingle. So you definitely have some ability to withstand wind, but is that same uh, thing true with your shingles and is there an actual rating to that? Yeah, with our Wakefield Bridge, it's basically Miami-Dade hurricane uplift. It's up to 140 miles an hour winds. Oh man, how about that? Yeah. Now, how, where does that strength come from? Or talk to me about how it resists that wind uplift. Because this shingle right here is getting nailed and then this asphalt uh, kind of strip, this glue strip, glues that next shingle down and keeps the wind from flapping up. But that's not exactly true on your metal shingles, right? No, correct. You'd have six screws, so six holes for six screws, and they all interlock into each other. So the, the strength of the panel after it's, in, it's installed with your six screws is that it's completely locked in all four sides. Ah, so it's a screw down too compared to a, to nail, a down. nail down. So you're actually going to get that screw pull out hold which is much stronger than, let's say, a smooth shank roofing nail. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. And then these panels are also, if you can see it on the video, they're locking together. So as those panels come together, that wind can't pop that off uh, like this glue strip could because they're actually physically metal on metal locked together. Yeah. That's pretty cool. One thing just to note that, uh, for any the builders watching us, this is going to use a truss head screw, which is kind of a flat head, not that big hex screw that you might see in some other metal roofing applications, so that when you slide that next panel over top here, you don't have the big screw head in the way. Let's talk energy efficiency. Uh, we're actually doing a project in Austin with your shingles right now at a buddy of mine's house, and he elected to do this black shingle of yours. And uh, he told me he wanted the darker color, so I, I gave him a sample board of yours. You've got kind of a, a bunch of different grays. You've got this black. Uh, I'm assuming this is going to really soak up the sun's rays, really not too dissimilar from a black shingle, right? Correct. Um, the Wakefield Bridge steel shingles are made from the Sherman William paint. Uh, where we're, they're applying the Sherman William paint PVDF, uh, which is. Uh, has a kynar substrate to it, mm -hmm. which reflects the sun. So ultimately, reflecting the sun, giving it a all a lot better SRI value. Um, so let's define that real quick. Solar reflective good. index, uh, meaning that even though it's black, there is still some ability for that paint because it's got. I think there's some ceramic in that paint. Uh, if I remember correctly from my previous Sherwin Williams videos, which is still reflecting. Now it's not as high a solar reflecting index. For instance, as your bright silver, which has a like 70 something yeah, SRI, uh, but this is maybe in the 20s or 30s. So you have some amount of reflectance, even on the black. Now, in fairness, though, asphalt singles, uh, you can also look up the solar reflecting index and they're going to have various amounts of reflectivity. So uh, it's something I would highly recommend if you're in the south look for a higher SRI. And in fact, I put a lot of these Galvalume looking roofs on like this silver because I really like that. Uh, although funny enough, my wife wouldn't have it. So I had to do black metal on my personal roof because <laughs> uh, my wife really wanted that black roof. Yeah. Okay, next up, uh, let's talk about fade resistance of paint versus shingles because you've got a metal substrate, a galvanized substrate that has that PVDF finish on there. Uh, you know, is there a worry or a concern that these are going to fade out over time? No, with the advancement of the technology and the paint systems these days, um, you're looking at anywhere from a 40 year to 50 year transferable warranty. With wow. our Wakefield Bridge, we're warranting basically the shingle, the galvalume substrate of it for fit full 50 year, fully transferable. Okay. And on the paint, you got a full 40 year. That's pretty amazing. Holy cow. All right, so let's piggyback that with longevity, because I think when we talk about paint finish, longevity is really the next thing to talk about. Now, when it comes to asphalt shingles, you can get various types of asphalt shingles, and generally speaking, the thinner the shingle, the less warranty you'll get on the product. The thicker the shingle, the more. So if you get a, uh, you know, an architectural three tab, they might call it a 40 or a 30 year roof. I'm a little suspect of that. I've seen them change much, much sooner than that. But you guys have a 50 year warranty on this particular roofing product. So uh, I'm assuming this is going to be a longer lasting product. Correct. Like we mentioned, the, this is the warranty that we have on it. But as we know, there's farms that are 100 years before there's actually a failure in the roof system. So the metal has been proven for centuries 
to be Outlast and Asphalt Shingles or many other products out there. Yeah, and I would say, you know, these guys are going to give you a 50-year warranty in the roof, but that roof's going to go 60, 70, maybe longer years. And most of the time when I see metal roofs replaced uh, on remodels or on job sites uh, in Texas where I am, it's usually an aesthetic reason, not a leak reason, not a rust reason. Uh, you know, certainly you're going to see some fade from this gray, let's say, over the next six decades. But most of the time, it's not a failure of the roof itself. It's being replaced for cosmetic reasons or the new owner just wants a new look for the house. Correct. Yeah. Okay, let's talk cost. I know people watching this, Philip, are curious about cost. And there's certainly some misinformation out there on cost. Let's talk about that. Uh, you know, I know it's really hard because we're publishing this video all over North America, but what would you expect uh, typical asphalt shingles installed to be uh, in the upper end shingle, you know, a nicer architectural three tab? Well, as we know, the rising cost of asphalt shingles keep, uh, keep rising. So typically, um, let's say a typical cost study between an asphalt roof and a steel shingle, I normally say you're about the two two to two and a half times the, the price. So anywhere, um, let's say you're at 50 cents a bundle, that you would be picking up your asphalt shingle for a decent asphalt shingle, mm -hmm. times $3.50, plus you add your installation. So let's call it $4. Uh, the installer working on another job was mentioning $4 a square or 400 a square. Mm -hmm. uh, consider double for the Wakefield Bridge or um, two and a half times, you'd be in the eight to, let's say, 1,200. Uh, range for sure per square per square All right so just to break that down we're talking about per hundred square feet when roofers talk about square they're talking about a hundred square feet so by the square foot you may be talking about four dollars and we may be talking about maybe eight dollars for this but i would like to mention this is a roof that's easily going to go double maybe even triple the lifetime uh, and if you had to rip this off and replace this three times uh, i think that your pain factor is going to be much much higher than what you're paying when you pay more for a steel shingle to begin with, like these Wayfield Bridge from Ideal. I agree. You do it once and you do it right. Let's switch gears. We've talked a lot about it. In my mind, steel wins. You know, I've been building uh, custom homes since 2005, uh, and in that time, I've put exactly zero of these on the houses that I've built or remodeled over that period of time. I've done nothing but either steel roofs or, in fairness, I've put some clay tile and some concrete tile as well because I'm a big believer in putting a long lasting roof that's gonna be durable and is gonna be able to take the hail, especially in the south. But I do wanna talk for a minute about energy efficiency. All right guys, so we're putting the Wakefield Bridge shingle on a house right now, this is my buddy's house. Let me talk you through the details just so you kinda of know what's happening on this house. Uh, the underlayment, we're using a really good underlayment. This is Shark Skin's Ultra underlayment, uh, rated to 300 degrees, which is a really big deal for me in the south. And you're gonna notice that that underlayment, uh, we always want that to overlap the edge of our roof. I'm pretending like the desktop is the edge of my roof here. We're gonna lay that over the edge of the roof. Then we're gonna create an air channel so that I can ventilate underneath that roof. I really like to create ventilation underneath any type of roof I've got. And so that's what we're doing here. So I've actually created this from corrugated plastic and I had this ripped to three quarters of an inch uh, at Regal Plastics, which is my local corrugated plastic dealer. This is a 10 millimeter strip. So if you look at it, the holes are oriented vertically and we're gonna put this right at the edge of the roof, right on the fascia board. Next up, the roofer is then taking this dimple mat. This is also by Sharkskin. This is a ventilation mat. And you're gonna notice that it's going with the nipple side up. The dimples are facing straight up. Now I want this ventilation strip to be flush with the edge of the roof deck so that when I put the drip edge on in a minute, I'll show you that, I'm gonna get good airflow underneath the roof. Next up, I'm in the south, and this is an old house that has no radiant barrier, plus we've got a dark colored roof, so we're gonna create some extra energy efficiency by using this. This is the uh, Sharkskin Ultra Radiant product, which basically has an aluminum foil type facer and we need that to face towards the air gap. So we're putting that straight down on top of the ventilation mat facing the air gap. If this was face up, it would not provide the radiant barrier. It needs to be face down, believe it or not. Okay, so now this is a kind of like a drip edge, a starter for shingles. 
and this comes with a kick out uh, lip right there. That is going to go on top of this assembly here so that when you look at this, you're going to see I've got airflow underneath here flowing up and then my starter course of shingles are going to clamp onto the end here and then we're going to run the shingles up the roof. This is a really, really nice assembly for the south, but it's not necessary uh, if you're building in a colder climate because you don't necessarily need that radiant barrier in a colder climate. Although I would tell you for any climate, having your metal roof of any variety or really any roof up on an air gap is always a best practice. All right, guys, hopefully you learned something. I would tell you, uh, even though Ideal Roofing sponsored this video, I'm a huge proponent of metal in general, and I'm really, really liking this Wakefield Bridge product uh, from Ideal Roofing. Very cool family-owned company. I'll put a link to those guys in the description so you can see all the options, all the colors, all the flavors. I did want to mention one thing I really like about these guys is that some of their shingles look like more normal shingles in my mind rather than looking like slate or some other product. And so that's one of the things that really drew me to them because I, I really like how this house in particular that we're doing turned out with this really black roof. It kind of disappears. It's not too flashy, it's just right for me. But like I said, there's all kinds of options out there. If you're not currently a subscriber, guys, hit that subscribe button below. You know we've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.